So a lot of you guys asked for some content on how do you write intros. So I got my good friend Polaris, who's a classically trained pianist as well as a talented drum and bass producer. And he's going to dive deep on this topic for you guys. Just some background info on Polaris. He's had some acclaimed releases on some huge labels, including Med School, Hospital Records, and recently the huge Pilot Records. We've also had a record together on technique recordings called Aquarius. You can check it out in the link below. Just a heads up, some of this content requires some music theory. So I do recommend you guys brush up on your music theory so you can get the full depth of his process. Not only will you learn how Polaris writes intros, you're gonna learn about his creative process and how he turns an idea into a full out song. This is a longer video and there's tons of gold nuggets here around his creative process. So I recommend you guys write down notes. And if you're interested in more of Polaris's content, he has some tutorials for sale and you can check it down in the link below. And hey, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, comment down below and let me know what other topics you'd like to see from guest artists. And make sure you follow my Instagram and TikTok where I'm providing additional exclusive content. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is how I come up with my intros for most of my songs. And I thought about, you know, I could either take a song that I've already finished and just go through everything that I've done. But I've decided to actually start something kind of from scratch. This is just something that I put together really quickly in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. As far as intros go, for me, I generally would start with something like a piano that I can build melodies with. And then I don't necessarily have to keep the piano. I can change it to another instrument. I have at that point figured out the chord progressions that I'm going to use and you know what key it's going to be in, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I do like to write F minor a lot. I do like to write an A minor a lot, mostly because of the frequency spectrum when it comes to the lower end of a tune. I like to be able to use as many notes in the sub area as possible without worrying about them not coming through properly and cutting out on certain systems or certain headphones or even cell phones if you're listening to it on your phone you know on an instagram story i even there i'd like the full spectrum of sound to be able to kind of pop up so it doesn't get drowned out by everything else what i uh, generally like to do is to start with the main section of the tune for example I don't, this isn't really much at all other than this pad that I have come up with. And this is just a something from Contact that I used. It wasn't from Mysteria. I, I believe it was something from Straylight that I found. And it didn't sound too far away from what it is now, but it I did end up adding some reverb to it. And this is what... It sounds like. So you kind of get an idea of, I guess, essence of the track that I'm going for. I, I, I really do like to work a lot with very un conventional chords and chord progressions um, i try to kind of stick out like a sore thumb in that sense and then i'll basically polish that down to something that sounds really good so sometimes i'll even take notes and just play you know let's say you'll take yeah so here we go let's say i could take something like this and Let's just turn the reverb down for now so that I can display this a little bit better. So let's say we're doing like an F minor, right? You could see it here on the uh, on the notes. That would be something like a harmonic scale for F minor. Um, so basic minor triad chord for F minor would be 
right? And you could hear that mostly anywhere. You hear all sorts of progressions like... You know, you'd play double notes in the bass on the C sharp, D sharp, F. It's pretty straightforward stuff. We'll listen to this kind of pad again and see what kind of key we're, we're, we're in here in, in, uh, in terms of the track. Yeah, so it seems like we're in... It seems like we're in D minor. That's what I would say. That's probably the root note of the whole track. So oh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around like I normally would with some chord progressions and different things and I'll leave the keyboard open on the screen so you can take a look and see gauge kind of what I'm playing. I'm going to try and keep it pretty simple so you can follow along. And this is just going to be basically looping over and over again which is generally what I do. I'll create an atmosphere like this and then I'll just let it loop over and over again and I'll sit there for as long as it takes until I come up with something that is substantial. So let's try and do that now. Maybe, actually, you know what? I think I might have a filter on this. No, I don't. I like to, I like to do this a lot as well. I just get an auto filter. You can also do this with, uh, with an EQ and I will filter out the high end. Just like that. So now I will get back to playing you, uh, just kind of playing around and seeing what I can come up with. So here we go. So as you just saw there, these three high notes are just side by side. You got a tone in between these notes, so anything with a black key in between it, or anything with any key, like let's say you got the F and the G, and you got the F sharp between it, that is a tone, that's called a tone. And a semitone would be if you were to go from the white key to the black key. So going from the white key to the black key here, you got one key in between, which would make it a tone. Now we've got three different notes that I was playing here, side by side. So you've got two tones going on, which is basically... 
But if you add the root note, which is the uh, E, and then it's hard to explain because I, I wish you could hear what I heard, what I hear in my head. But as soon as I play something like that, I get another note comes into my head, and I'll add that note on top of what I'm already playing. Right. So it'll, for example, this is this is just what I heard. So as you can see, I'm pressing a lot of keys at that point. And I mean, I do have pretty decently large sized hands so I can reach those keys. And sometimes I'm even pressing, I'm pressing two keys at a time with one finger. So I'll go in between them and just press them both at the same time so that it kind of extends my, my reach a little bit more. At that point, if you saw there, I was just, these are just one, two, three, four notes that are right beside each other, and I'm just playing them all together at the same time. Now, it's very important to learn your scales, because each scale has different sharps and flats, and you can't just press any key and make it sound good. So what I would suggest is going to any website or YouTube video or tons of free stuff out there where you can learn scales and you can learn what sharps and what flats each scale contains. Well, at that point, all I'm doing, uh, the, the the right hand is is staying the same. It's that it's dancing between uh, these two chords, uh, C, E, and A, and a D minor chord, D, F, and A. All you're changing is these two, these two, and then your pinky note stays the same. And the pinky note is the fifth of the from the tonic note, which is the D, because we're in D minor. So one, two, three, four, five. That's our last note, right? And the chord. The hand that's doing the playing, or or is in the spotlight in this instance, would be the left hand, which plays the bass parts. So it starts with a with a D. You can move up to the to the G, and then we get up to the A sharp. And then you can even go down to the C. And you're back to where you started. So phrasing is very important and it's very essential for being able to write uh, successful chord progressions. I wouldn't generally leave a song, uh, you know, on a cliffhanger like the movies. So you need to think of it as a wheel. So you're starting from first chord, you're playing all these different chords throughout throughout the wheel, and eventually you should land back where you started. That's considered a phrase. That's what I call a phrase, and 
do whatever you want in between that really i mean as long as musically it makes sense so you got a phrase there right to simplify that it's just So now if uh, we just play the other the pad area with it, so let's see here. But anyways, that's the general idea behind it. I do see that I've written a bass part already, which I completely forgot that I had. So let's kind of see what the bass sounds like in this instance. So yeah, just to recap really quick, you just want to do it like a four bar or an eight bar loop somewhere in your project and then start working within that kind of section. Put everything together in there, take all your ideas in that section and then build around that. So it's kind of unconventional in a way that I write because I don't actually start with the intro. I like to write the main section first, I guess the drop, if you will, and then I'll go backwards and I'll subtract elements for the intro because then I already have stuff to work with. So it's easier for me to do that uh, than to go along, go along and build it up. I don't know why. It's not, you know, not, not everyone does it that way, but that's just, I guess, how my workflow has what it's turned into over the years of me doing this. Hey, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products. I have a gnarly serum preset pack with over 150 face melting base presets. As well, I have some Ableton project files to jumpstart your next idea. But if you're not ready yet, you can pick up my free serum preset pack and my free sample pack. For more information, check the links down below. quick tidy this up you can see here the chord that I've played is a very simple chord with a lot of things in between it but essentially it's you got the D down here well actually it's in the upper part of the of the register but if you look it's basically every white note these are just four notes right beside each other. 
then with the A, the third below that. what it sounds like so we will freeze this track and we'll put in another audio and we will i like to take the entire thing because you never know sometimes the tail end is the best part of the entire chord and you just copy it down here and you can unfreeze get rid of that save some cpu power consolidate these two together and you got yourself a little... nice little board going on there Let's say, you know, now we got kind of like a main, you know, ish chunk of a track. Move these over to here, you know, keep the board that we have, which is this. So basically this is the beginning of, of the song here, right? Just automate this, start opening up a little bit. Then you can start with the bass. I mean, I usually don't use bass in my intros, but you can if you'd like. Essentially, you would also be adding some, you know, hi-hats. Or essentially some sort of top loop just to keep timing going, something like that. Copy all those together, consolidate them. And then you take elements from the main section, right? Let's say this sound. You can take it here and start playing around with it a little bit. Right when the beat comes in. Then you'd have the filter open up a little bit more and more each time. Bada bing, bada boom, you'd get the drop right here. I, because there's a wall of sound happening, I like to make it duck with something. I like to, I like the sidechain a lot, sidechain my pads a lot, I like that pumpy effect of it. Say so we get that, we'll go to a compressor. We will sidechain from, I guess we'll call this Ghost Kick, and Ghost Kick. Pull the threshold down. And we would only turn it on at the drop, so it would be here, it would be off, so we just automated the on-off switch, basically. So you get this kind of nice build whole build going on.
you know, and then you just kind of, you, you, you start adding things as, as you go. You start hearing things. You just start listening kind of more intently. All right. And, I mean, this is a very kind of sped up process of it, but generally you want to take your time with these sounds. Make sure they fit in nicely with everything else. And a lot of times I'll go back when the song is kind of almost fully fleshed out and I'll change little things here and there. Sometimes I'll even take something that's in the drop and start building it in from here. thing going on you could take this sound for example and reverse it and it acts as a build-up right and for example like i'd like to group these two together all in pads and you know what let's just try it we'll copy the compressor with the side chaining over to here and just delete this one altogether so then when you got so as you can see we're filling it out slowly we're slowly filling this out you know and you can keep going with this for it's 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 literally infinite possibilities i mean you know, you can spend as much as an entire week on just doing the intro portion of it. Sometimes I will just, like... This is, this will be me live playing it. See all the autom automation here that happened that I was doing. And this will stick in the pads group as well. So what it'll do... Is it will pump with everything else.
so that sounds like we're getting somewhere. The drums are very bare bones right now. They're not punchy. They're not, you know what I mean? This is just an example of how I go about writing my tunes. So we're going to turn this into a audio clip. Freeze that. Do that. Get rid of that. Let's join all these together. Now that we've got like sort of a main section, these bits, move them over, move them on over. You can start fleshing out the tune more. Move them all the way here. And just start repeating this section here a few times. And then you just, you start to add the little things. You start to add the, the, you know, pianos and you start to add the build on the drums and, you know, and, and once you got that maybe you'll find something else that you put in here that can work in the intro so it's very kind of it's very subjective it's very personal um, writing intros for songs is is a very personal thing it's not the there's no textbook for it there's no you know way you should go about doing it if you want to start a song from the bridge start it from the bridge uh, if you want it started from the last bar of the tune, because, you know, you have a good outro going on, start it from there. There's absolutely no rules when it comes to writing intros. Um, I've heard intros that start with a bang. I've heard intros that start with very quiet sounds, very, you know, they build and they build and they build. And that's you know, usually how I write it. But as far as, as, as writing an intro, this is pretty much how I do it. So I guess let's play the whole thing and hear what it sounds like. Gotta give give things time to breathe. There's everyone's favorite, you know, the piano, of course. And, you know, it doesn't have to stay like that the whole time. You can get, let's say, uh, change up the bass here a little bit. And then of course on the piano, you know, you can go and go pretty nuts with the piano actually. Take a reverb, Let's see. Get rid of those lower. Get an EQ, get rid of some of the low end. 
bit of the low, just not full spectrum, very muddy. And then you just play. You just you just play. That's all you need to do. You, you, you don't need to worry about anything else. How the, how the song sounds, the technicality of it, you just play. that's basically the gist of it guys um, you know i start with chunk of the the drop metal section work my way up from down from there start stripping elements down and then create the intro that way and then i start slowly building it and building it and building it until it gets to the drop but i've already created all the elements i've already put everything together in the drop so Therefore, it's much easier and the ideas for your intro flow way better, way better. So yeah, other than that, uh, I guess that would be it. You guys enjoyed watching Polaris's process on songwriting and building intros. 
Lots of gold nuggets for producers here, no matter what level you're on. So I hope you found something helpful. And remember to follow Polaris on all your favorite social media links down in the link below. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. And I'll see you at the next video.